Okay, in my last video, I showed you how to install the Medibuntu repository for the non-free codexes, and also showed you how to install the, uh, oh, what's it called, the closed source Sun Java, right? Okay, like, like I said before, there's two types of Java. There's an open source and there's a closed source. So which one you want, is it's up to you. But in the last video, video I showed you how to do the uh, closed source one. Anyways, uh, you probably noticed that your DVD playback does not work, right? As you can see, this, it doesn't work. So that's because it's missing a codec, right? So after you get done installing that Medi Ubuntu repository, uh, go ahead and look for this, the lib DVD CSS. So go ahead and install that. And uh, while you're at it, I do recommend installing uh, VLC, which is another great program for playing uh, you know, audio and video formats. That should help as well. Go ahead and install that too. Hopefully this won't take too long. Okay, there it goes. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it for now. All right, so it's all done installing, right? So uh, let's try it again. Right click, open with movie player. And there you go. It works just like a DVD, right? Uh, you have your full you know, scene selection, your menus, all that stuff. The same thing should be with uh, VLC. There you go. Scene selection features, you know, stuff like that. So, anyways, a real good program to copy DVDs is well. There's actually two of them. I'm gonna go over one right now. Is a K9 copy. So K9. There it is, right here. Go ahead and install that. And it's gonna take some time, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video again. Okay, so it's done already. It's installed. So, remember how I was talking about earlier finding an alternative to some Windows programs? So, this is pretty much what a, an alternative would be to, like, um, like it says right here, like to DVD shrink or something. Uh, this is going to take the, the larger DVD movie size and shrink it down to a standard DVD size, right? You can shrink it down to an ISO or rip it into a folder, you know, and watch it from there. So, basically, it's meant to back up copies or make duplicates. So, it's already installed. Let's go ahead and launch it. K9. Let's use the assistant, make it a little bit easier. Okay. Uh, this first step is basically just make sure you have the DVD in the system, you know, in your in your DVD drive. Go to next. And it's gonna ask you whether you want to, I guess, duplicate it to another DVD drive, like another blank DVD, like a cop like a from the, the source file, which would be the original DVD to a, a blank DVD or to a folder which you're ripping the, the media off the disk into a folder or to an ISO. So you're going to shrink down the image into an ISO format. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm just going to copy it into an ISO file so I can burn it later if I wanted to. Go to next. So it already found all the files. I mean, sorry, all the uh, tracks along with the, uh, I believe, subtitles as well. Here it is right here, all the English. I guess you can select them all if you want. All right. Pick and choose, mix and match, I guess. Go to next. All right, I want the I do want the menus, so just keep in mind when you make these little shrunk down uh, duplicates, they're gonna be pretty clear, but not perfectly clear to the original, and your basically your your sub menus and and your uh, start menus are gonna be real grainy because it's gonna it's gonna degrade the menus in favor for the actual media the movie itself. Okay, let's go to next, change folder. That's fine. Press OK, and there it goes. So this is going to take a while, so I'm going to, I'll go, I'm going to go ahead and stop it for now and uh, come back to it. I'm going to show you how to run the, the ISO without having to burn it, okay? So be back in a minute, or a second, I mean. All right, it's all done. All right, it shrank the, the DVD down to a pretty good size. It should be about 4 gigs, maybe, properties. Oh, here it is, 4 gigabytes. So... Pretty much you can just burn it onto a DVD and pop it into a DVD player and it should run just fine. Um, but if you don't want to do that, you can actually play the ISO file without having to burn it to a DVD. So let's go to open with another program. We're going to select, um, let's go ahead and select VLC. And make sure it says remember. Right? Press open. Right click. Oh, I'm sorry. It's already going. There it is. 
So right now I'm running off the ISO file, not the DVD. And it works just fine. There's a menu, scenes, right? So that's pretty much it for that. Um, let's say you don't want to do an ISO file, right? You don't want to burn a DVD. You basically just want a file. And, you know, that's really common with, you know, like torrent sites when you download or upload. If you want to do something like that, um, there's a couple programs I can recommend. And one will be uh, Acid Grip. Let me see if I can find it for you. ACID. This one right here. Um, this will rip a DVD into a file. I'm not going to go in depth in this one, but um, it's it's pretty good. It's pretty straightforward. Um, one I would actually recommend over that. Sorry about the motorcycle. I don't know if you heard that. Anyways, would be uh, Handbrake, right? Handbrake's really, really good. Uh, the only problem I have with Handbrake, when you actually rip a DVD into a file, it takes a really long time, but it, it does it with really good quality. So let me go ahead and add this PPA. So we're going we're gonna to copy this whole little, this bold black section here. And when you search for PPAs, and basically what these PPAs are, um, if you don't know this, it's like software that's outside of your of your uh, software center. Uh, wh what Canonical and Ubuntu does is with these repositories, like they, they gather all the software that's compatible, basically, and it's stable, and they put it in the center so you can you can download it and install it. But you have to wait six months for the next release to get more updated software, right? And by using these, these PPAs, these per, per, what's it called, personal package archives, um, it's you kind of get around that. You can get like more up-to-date uh, software, like say for Kden Live or OpenShot or whatever, and also some other software that's not in the repositories as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. Copy. All right. Let me minimize that. Let me go to my software center. Let's go to uh, file. I'm sorry, edit, software sources, give your password. All right, other software, click add, right click and paste that line, add source, close it, and hopefully it'll bring it up right away. Like I said before, sometimes when you add these little sources to the software center, it doesn't really uh, refresh it right away, right? As soon as you start typing handbrake, sometimes it won't show up, sometimes it will. Make sure I'm going to spell it right. Let's see, handbrake. Like I said, before I'm a horrible speller, I have, uh, <laughs> I have dyslexia, so sorry. It's probably lower cases. See, it's not there. So let me, uh, let me use a synaptic, see if that works. Give your password. Still not there. Space, maybe? There it is. So go ahead and install it, Handbrake GTK. All right, shouldn't take too long. I'm just gonna be real quick about it. I'm not gonna go into in you know show you all the features of Handbrake. I'm just gonna show you how to rip a, a DVD into a file with Handbrake, and how to get the best quality out of it. All right, come on. There we go. Close it off. Close out the Synaptic. I'll just minimize it. Whatever. Handbrake. Here it is. All right, the DVD is already loaded. So we're going to click on source. Let me cancel that. Video source. Oh, I'm sorry, go file right here where it says uh, the title of your, uh, of your DVD. Click on that. It's going to scan it for the most, uh, the biggest file. So basically the media, the movie itself. Come on. All right. And um, to get like a really good quality out of it, I believe go to uh, 
where are you at? Video, where it says consistent quality, where it says bit rate, just raise it up a bit. You know, raise it up to maybe like, uh, I said 1500, maybe like 2000, like so. And basically, it's going to make your, your it's, it kind of aims at about 700 megabytes, but this will make it about like, like 1.2 gigs. It's a little bit bigger, but the quality is a lot nicer. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And it's going to rip the, 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 the movie from the DVD into one single file. And that's pretty much it. But this is going to take a while, while, about pretty much as long as the movie, like an hour and a half to an hour. So, anyways, I'm going to stop it now. Be back in a second. All right, it's all done. As you can see, it's right here. It's just one basic little file. Let me see how big it is. It should be like a gig, 1.3 gigabytes. So it's not too bad. You know what I mean? Uh, with the added size, you know, it does have a little bit better quality. So let me go ahead and play with uh, VLC. And it should play. There you go. As you can see, it's nice and clear. Right? Okay, I can't play too much. I don't want to get busted or anything. So, <laughs> anyways, that's it for this video, I guess. And um, the next video, I'll probably cover maybe some audio programs, maybe some audio conversion, you know, like uh, MP3 to AUG or AUG to MP3 or whatever, stuff like that. Maybe some uh, some jukeboxes. Well, I call them jukeboxes, but basically a, a, an audio player, I guess, similar to iTunes, like like Banshee Rhythm Box, you know, Clementine. Uh, there's a, there's quite a few of them. So. I'll go into that stuff on the next video. So thanks for watching and uh, see you later.